meters, the mesopelagic or midwater zone begins. If any sunlight does exist, there's not enough to see or support plant life. Without any light from the sun, creatures down here make their own. Bioluminescence is apparent in animals throughout the water column. But as you go deeper, bioluminescence becomes more and more important as the only means of communication that, that we're aware of. The few creatures that can't produce their own bioluminescence harness bacteria that do. These spectral animals don't glow in the dark to see where they're going, but use light to communicate. Flashes of light are used to emit a welcome or a warning to stay away. Certain species of shrimp can even vomit a bioluminescent irritant that temporarily incapacitates an attacker. My colleague Edie Witters says that Looked at objectively, bioluminescence is the most important communication form on Earth. And I'm sure she's right because of the vast numbers of plants and animals that create light in order to communicate with one another, to avoid predation, to attract prey, and for all kinds of other interactions. In other words, more creatures use light to communicate than all forms of sound put together including the vast array of human languages. Bioluminescence is just one of many ingenious adaptations animals have evolved to survive and thrive in the deep sea. Some 600 meters down, the capture of specimens like this vampire squid helps researchers make sense of a world that's still relatively unexplored. But other deep sea creatures are not so easy to capture or explain. <laughs> Definitely. Possibly the longest animal organisms on Earth, siphonophores are carnivorous predators. But so delicate, they disintegrate when netted or grasped. The largest siphonophore we've ever measured was 41 meters in length. Siphonophores are gelatinous predators that send out a curtain of tentacles that will capture anything that happens to blunder into it. They are unusual in that they're colonial animals. It's a colony that behaves like a single organism. They're made up of multicellular individuals that work together, although each has a specialized function. A siphonophore is like a cooperative made up of thousands of conjoined twins, each designed to perform a specific task. Like ant colonies, there are specialized individuals who have particular functional roles within the community. There are propulsive units. There are individuals that are reproductive elements. There are individuals whose role is to catch and digest food. Nothing like it can be found on land. Experts can't decide how to classify it. Do you treat it as a colony? Do you treat it as an individual? Or do you think of it as some sort of superorganism, which is often the fallback position? Well, it's special. It's not like anything else. We'll call it a superorganism and, and leave it at that. Other